the theme for my, for, my, for my teaching or my preaching this morning is faith for the breakthrough. Faith for the breakthrough. We're talking here about being believers. I need to believe God for that breakthrough. I need to believe God that he's able to take me from the dung hill and make me, make me to sit on king's horses. I need to believe God that from my prison I can get into presidency. I need to believe God that he will deliver me in the, in the lion's den. I need to believe God that he's able to do it. But you need a faith that will take you beyond that limitation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ wants to bring us to a place where we can see what God sees. So the first limitation we, we have is a limitation obviously of our mind. Because our minds can only contain as much as our exposures have brought us. Our minds cannot see God and see the will of God. In fact, the Bible says our minds are in enmity with God. Because they resist the word of the spirit. I want us to know that the spirit word and our minds are words apart. This man who was a leader sitting by the king, was seeing with his mind's eye. He was probably a PhD in economics. <laughs> and all his calculations said it's not possible. But Jesus Christ is getting us to a place where we can open our eyes and see in the spirit all the things that God has already prepared for us. Now let's take off from there. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 tells us. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. He says, through faith we believe. We understand. But before we say true, what, what is faith? We will get there. Verse 1 tells us that faith gives substance to what we hope for. And the hope is what God has, what God has already said. The hope we have of what God has already promised us is there. But faith gives substance to it. You can stand upon something that has substance. And it says faith gives evidence for what you have not seen. So in faith, you act now as though you already have it. You act now as though you are already walking in it. You rejoice and praise God like somebody who has already received it. That is how the attitude of faith is. It gives you substance for what you hope for. And it gives evidence for what you have not seen. Because in the eyes of your spirit, you already have beheld it. You have seen it. You are walking in it. Hallelujah. You have given it a name. And you're, 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 you've already called it a name. And you're walking in it. Hallelujah. So verse 3 says, through faith, the world, we understand. That's the only way we can understand how the world we see was framed. Through faith, we understand that the world was framed by the word of God. So that the things that are seen are not made out of things that do appear. So, faith brings what you see in the spirit to fruition. Say, Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Let me see the cloud. Oh, let me see the rain. Let me see it. Open my eyes. That I will see it. Hallelujah. Is the intention of God that we live as people who are seeing what is more real than what looks natural. If you could only imagine your life 10 years from now and see where the Lord has ordained for you to be, you can start living it now. You can start walking in that authority and talking as though you have it and living in that 
in that abundance because it's already available. God is not looking for it somewhere. It is already available. Hallelujah. So Romans chapter 12 verse 2 tells us that we should not be conformed to this world. He's saying that we should not allow our minds to, to choke what God has already spoken concerning us. Let's not be contained by the limitations of this world. Peter says that I have, we have toiled all night. We have done all we know professionally to do and it doesn't work. But at thy word. He refused to allow his experiences to define what his destiny is. He says, be not conformed to this word, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. You may prove, you will prove it. Now, the word prove actually means to approve of it. Let me try and explain to you so you understand. Now, if you, some of you have your Bibles here. Say you open your Bible, all right? You know in the days, so do we still use checks these days? I've not seen checks for a long time. I don't know if checks do exist. But let's assume that you open your Bible. And right in the middle, you see a check with your name written on it. And it's written there, 2 million rand. With your name, cash. Will you believe it? <laughs> In this day of all kinds of fraud, all kinds of things will go through your mind, isn't it? It is written there. It's your name. So you need to prove it. <laughs> you need to what? Prove it. How do you prove it? You call the banker. Is this money in this account? This person who wrote the check, does this person have money? Is there a money in this account? And if you can prove that there is money in the account, then you have approved the will of God. You see, before now you just had a paper saying 2 million rand. But once you have approved it, it's no longer 2 million rand on the paper. You have two million rand. Are you getting the, the, what that word is saying? That there are promises that have been spoken to you and me. For many of us, it's a fairy tale. For many of us, it's so far fetched and distant. But we need to prove it by taking that word and meditating upon it or upon it. Let our spirits and the spirit of God and the word of God come into agreement that this word is mine, then you will be able to walk into the wealth of that which is written. The reason why we don't is that there's a, cut, there's a, there's a, a schism between our minds and what the word is saying. So we don't enjoy the beauty of everything that, that God has spoken concerning us. So it says, transform your mind, renew your mind, renew your mind, refuse to accept what the limitations your mind is giving you. Romans 8.28 says, and we know that is when your spirit and your mind has come into acceptance. And we know that all things work together for good. There is a knowing in the spirit when your mind has been submitted, sub, submitted and converted by the word of God and taken captive by your spirit, there is a knowing that I'm healed. There's a knowing that I can never be poor. There's a knowing that I'm strong. There's a knowing that I am delivered. There is a knowing in the inside of you. You've got to have that knowing. For we know. For we know. For we know. Nobody can know for you. Nobody can know for you. You've got to know for yourself. For I know that all things work together. For me. For my good. Because I love God. 
and I walk according to his purpose. I don't care which way it comes. I don't care what, what I'm going through right now. Is God preparing me for my breakthrough? And in due course, I will see everything come really manifesting itself. Hallelujah.